had a hard time deciding which project I was I was proud of because usually I would I would want to talk about a school project that we did, but I think I talk about it quite a lot. And so for this time to talk about sustainability, I wanted to talk about something um, at a smaller scale mm -hmm. and may, maybe closer closer to heart. So I wanted to talk about um, one home design in Bangkok. So it's a house in an urban area. So um, the owner is a husband and a wife, and they have one kid who is growing up and there is a one elderly living to be living in house with them. Um, they are hard workers. So this is like their hard earned money and they wanted to have the house for them. They, they, they came to us and they said that, okay, we, we were interested in your work because we, we wanted to have a house that probably could save some energy. So they, they came to us with the perception of, of energy, but then they know that we do green. So they hope, um, they hope that we, we could work for them and to create a house that would make them feel like they're resting in a resort because they said that these days they've been working so hard that um, during holidays they would try to go or travel somewhere, but they feel that they're living in, in a high rise condominium at the time. So they feel that this is a really big transition for them. They wanted to have the, the home for them. Um, and so with, with this idea, we, we had a lot of communication with the owners. Um, and we we worked using our our base basic um, design process we integrate you know some climate and context analysis and the house was very it was a very simple house um, it was a, a small pocket courtyard house with natural ventilation and the, the house the site is really in a good location it has sort of like a lake a water view and it's in a community that doesn't have any um, safety issue. So we decided to open the house onto the view of the lake, but it was on a bad orientation because it's open onto the southwest side of it. So we we were have been testing different options to make a massing that can be self-shaded. And then we try to combine the functions that they wanted into a single sort of multi-purpose space. So we are we were reducing the usable space a little bit for them. So right now the ground floor is the living, dining, pantry, kitchen, sort of everything like connected in one area and also the elderly area. But on the second floor are the bedrooms for them. And um, the image that I'm going to show you, let's see, the first one. Okay, um, this image, I apologize for the resolution. It may not be as good because we actually got this from the client's Instagram. So this is, this is not the shot that an architect would take, you know, because an architect would take or architecture magazine, you would take a shot that maybe look at the elevation of the whole house, you know, look more architecturally. But this is something that the, the client, you could say the dweller, they, they are taking this shot. This is from the second floor on their terrace where they, they love to sit here and maybe look at the evening sky. And this is the, I have been looking at their Instagram. I, I got this with permission. I asked them already to, to use it. So I'm just saying that it has become the house, which um, they intended only for just for saving energy. And we're trying to do our best at best that we can with resources that we have in, this is a house in a very quite a dense um, urban area. Um, and you can see that maybe the client or the dweller's perspective or their experience might be different. What it would be like. And this is another image. They are not really the social media users, so they 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 took a few a few shots. But I think from all the shots that are related to the house, I think only less than 10% are the image of the house itself. But mostly it is their experience when they are living in the house. This is the picture that I, I actually cropped out their text, but her text goes something like um, leaf, shade, and shadows or something like that. So this is sitting, this is what? a view from the southwest side on the terrace that they've been using. So I think they, looking, looking at their Instagram photos, I was thinking that, okay, maybe client's experience are a totally different thing that architect could imagine. When you are designing a house, you might be imagining yourself, you know, walking in the house, you look at this and look at that and looking at how beautiful it's going to be just as 
maybe as when I was a young architect or the students, I would look at architecture magazines and I would appreciate how the house would look like. But this is a perspective from a person who actually spends more than eight or 10 hours inside the building that you design. And this is what they perceive. This is their real experience. This is another image. They, I think they put the text description here, something like uh, hashtag life, bird nest, because you're looking at, it is, it might not be a big thing for some people, but it's a big thing for, for me because I've been living in an urban area and with this tiny or small pocket green areas and this sort of the beginning of life, you know, the nest is kind of like a house to a bird, there, they started to like appreciate this from, a, from people who move from condominium, you know, from high rise to having a pocket space, green space of their own. I think this is quite a big thing. And you'll see that their focus are not how beautiful the house is right now, but it's been focusing on how they're interacting more with the space outside. This is the, the next photo. Um, they were very excited to see this bird in their yard because you, you, don't, you, don't, you rarely see this kind of thing or you rarely notice this kind of thing in a house in an urban area. So it, it got me thinking that even a really small pocket green space that you provide, um, I think trees have their, the ecosystem of its own, you know. Once you have something green, then life would come, life can flourish, even no matter at what scale it is. Um, when we have, when we were designing this house, we didn't have all these images on our mind, but this is what they actually, the dwellers, what they see. Um, and they appreciate it, all of these kind of things, not how beautiful the house would look. And this is the, um, the last image. Um, I asked them for permission as well, but the thing I wanted to say is that they, they said, they told us that this is the place where they would come and sit after their day would end almost every day. This is a bit set up because this is for some of the video that they took the vase and the plant, but this is where they would sit. And they told me that one thing they noticed is that they started to know the pattern of the sun, how, how and when the sun would start to enter. They said that they can now, um, they can now connect more with their neighbors, you know, because when they're sitting here looking at the lake, but they would see their neighbors come and running around, they started to know more of what their neighbor, who their neighbors are and what they're doing activities time-wise and all that. And then they also said that they noticed this, um, that when the sun is coming in, they said they're spending more time outside rather than inside because it's not, it's not as hot as they would imagine. So there is a small and reflecting pond in front of here just to sort of cool down the wind. And they have this vertical green areas to filter out the lower angle light when it comes in. So they were able to sort of tell us that, you know, during this season, I would sit here until 3 p.m. and then we would sort of retreat back into the living space. And if it gets too hot, we could turn on the ceiling fan. And then he knows that, okay, but at this different season, we would leave around this time and then we would turn on. And, do, and he also told us that, do you know um, how much electricity we could reduce by staying like, you know, outside like this? we are reducing the need to turn on the AC and our neighbors are surprised when they're looking at our electricity bills. So to me, I think that from the very beginning that the brief began as, okay, we wanted a house which could save some energy and then a house as a resort, but it has become much more to them. I think maybe when an architect design a home, you, you think about something, you might think you have achieved something when maybe your house win, won an award, but to the owner, this is their, their happiness because they would be spending so many years in the house is, that is to come. So when you're creating an architecture in which you connect them more to the, out, to the environment, or at least not blocking their relationship to the outside environment, while also considering their well-being, mm -hmm. then they start, to, they start to perceive more of what's happening around them. And it may, it may also help you to have a more sustainable, sustainable design at the end, because when you're designing anything, but you don't provide them with well-being or wellness, then they may not understand what you're planning to do. And at the end of the day, you have a house. Mm -hmm. So I think this house also taught us a lot before you move on to the next project in terms of the, how you listen to the client's brief, how you um, create that, trying to make that relationship to happen. 
So that's why we are proud. Um, and it also taught us that maybe what the clients or the dwellers are focusing are totally different than what the architects are focusing because you'll see that they may not focus at the house itself while the house is actually a place where all of this are happening and it cannot happen without this very house. 